Hey everyone, so Street Fighter 6 has been out for a week, so at this point I thought, you know what? What's better to do than to make our first tier list for the game? Obviously, I'm an expert player, obviously everybody has figured the game out inside and out and knows every aspect of every character, so we can start ranking who's best and who's trash. I'm kidding, but you know, the game has been out for a while, I have been playing it non-stop, and I think I have a pretty good grip on who's where. Uh, obviously, this will sort of take inspiration from some other tier lists. I've watched sort of just general placements, and again, obviously, I have some experience. I have been trying out most of the characters, I'm just like working through at least getting to bronze, or at least doing the placement matches with all of the characters just to get a feel for them. And of course, the second reason I'm doing this is that the YouTube algorithm does love them tier lists. And you know what? Street Fighter 6 is hype, tier lists are hype, so I'm like, I need a piece of that action. So yeah, this is going to be ranking all of the characters, S through D. Um, and yeah, this is just my opinion, let's get into it. Now probably the first thing to cover, and this is a pretty important point, the way that Street Fighter 6 is set up, I feel like tier lists matter a lot less than in previous iterations. Obviously, there are stronger characters and there are weaker characters, but everybody has access to the universal mechanics. And the universal mechanics are so strong and they determine so much of the match that really, like I said, whether a character is like super strong or less strong, matters a lot less in this game, in my opinion, than in previous iterations. Again, because you have all of your shit, you have your drive impact, you have your drive rush, and those, like learning how to use those are really the key moves. Like you really can't say that a character has trash defensive options because the parry is there, it's there for everyone. So I do like the universal mechanics a lot, and I do think it's a pretty good equalizer across the board. But still, there are obviously stronger and weaker characters, so let's go ahead and cover those. We are going to be starting in order and going with the poster boy, Ryu. Now, I do think that Ryu is a lot better in this game than he was in Street Fighter V. Ryu went through a lot of stages in SF5. He was pretty good when the game first came out and they nerfed him. And after they nerfed him, he really never managed to get back up to where he was. Now, I put Ryu in the B tier, and that's with the caveat that B tier is pretty solid in this game. Those are like the real solid characters. He has the same Ryu gameplay as he has always had. But I actually gotta say, I really like the new tools they gave him, especially that charge move. First of all, he has that, I don't even know what the moves, I don't know the move names, but that like close orb, that close Hadouken. Um, that thing is really good. First of all, it gives Ryu some pressure. And when it's buffed, it gives him a combo starter. And of course, the buff in general is really good. It's super good for his zoning. And I'm so happy that this is not logged behind a V-trigger or some special mode like it was in Street Fighter V. Pretty much everybody said that when Ryu got into V-trigger 1 in Street Fighter V, that's when he became good after his nerfs. And in this game, yes, he has access to only one move with that charge property, but he does have access and charging and throwing those charged fireballs is really easy. So yeah, I think really, like always, solid all around character and a lot better than he was in SF5. All right, Luke, Mr. Luke, who was of course very controversial in SF5 because he was incredibly strong. Um, and he's no different in this game. I put Luke easily into the S tier. He's such an incredibly strong character because basically everything that he had in Street Fighter V, he has in Street Fighter VI. He's a little bit less OP and less of a standout because, like I said, the universal mechanics just sort of equalize everything a little bit, but he is so incredibly strong. Great pressure, great combos. He probably has, I think, the best meterless combos in the game because of his like perfect charge mechanic. With those perfect charge flash knuckles, he can launch you, and he can do all of that for essentially no meter. A lot of characters have shorter, less damaging combos, or they have to spend meter uh, to do some of their higher damage ones. Luke is not the case. He can do the flash knuckles, launch you, get some great combos in, and do a ton of damage. Aside from that, he has fireballs, he has an uppercut, he has great pressure in the corner, good target combos. Like I said, Every single thing that made Luke OP in SF5, 
he has here and he's actually no different really i mean that was always supposed to be the case luke in sf5 was sort of the trial run for where they were taking characters in street fighter 6 and yeah now he's in street fighter 6 and he's super good all right moving on to chun li i think chun li i would put also into the b tier chun li is very strong but she has one heavy downside and that downside is you need to be really good with her she's an incredibly complicated character there are like two or three characters on this list that are very complicated and very difficult to play and chun li is one of them she has a lot of moves she has new moves and of course she has that stance and that stance has so many options and you need to learn how to use it in order to use her tools properly you will see if you look at some of the advanced chum players online especially in the higher ranks a lot of what they do is they go into the stance even during mid combo and that's what allows you to have access to her high damage other than that she has great pressure she has great air normals um very solid fireball but like i said the thing that's sort of holding her back quote unquote is you really need to be dedicated to this character and specialize in her if you want to do well she's not a type you can just like pick up and play and because of that uh she is a little bit more difficult and a little bit lower tier because of that instead of a character like luke where you can just go and mash out the target combo do a special and you have a lot of damage but still, Chun is awesome in this game. I really like her design. I really like her new moves and overall solid. But yeah, just get ready to learn with her. Next up is Jamie. Jamie really kind of falls into the same category as Chun Li in terms of being very specialist. But he's a little bit worse. And that's really the thing that's holding Jamie back. He's going into the C tier. Jamie, like I said, very similar. He has a lot of moves. You need to really pay attention to his drink level and keep going for the drink level because without it, you're getting essentially nerfed damage. Um, so if you think your Jamie is doing a lot of, uh, not doing a lot of damage, sorry, it's because you're not getting the drink levels. But yeah, he has a lot of sort of moves that build on top of each other as you build up the drink level. And you need to learn all of them in order to do well because... Uh, he really needs it. He needs a lot of the toolkit and he needs to use his toolkit in order to do well. And that's what makes him really difficult. Again, this is a character you need to dedicate to, but at the same time, he's not even as strong as Chun Li in terms of having good pressure options, good normals, and all that. Really, I think the thing that's holding him back currently is that he starts out with nerf damage. Uh, there are some characters who can fairly reliably shut down his drinking either because they're good zoners or they just don't give him an opportunity to get some combos in. And when that happens, Jamie has a really tough time because he just does piss poor damage. Still, awesome character. I really like playing as Jamie. Uh, I picked him up a while ago and I actually really enjoy the character overall. You can do well with him. I'm not saying he's terrible, but you do need to dedicate to him and he is a lot weaker than a lot of other characters. Again, it comes down to the similar thing as Chun Li. Why would you learn all of the crazy Jamie moves and all the combos and the specialist things? But again, you can just pick up Luke and you'll get the same damage mashing out a target combo and a special. Next up, Guilei, i.e. Guile. Guile is also going into the S tier. Guile is really another one of those characters that's just incredibly solid. He has always been solid, of course, that's kind of his style. But again, everything that Guile had in SF5 that made him good in SF5, he has in 6, and it's even tuned up a little bit. First of all, he has way better target combos. That medium punch or crouching medium punch, crouching medium punch target combo is awesome. It's such a huge tool for Guile because... It allows him to obtain charge for flash kick and anything much, much easier from going into a standing medium punch. Like that standing medium punch, crouching medium punch special, uh, which was one of his BMB combos in SF5, was very difficult. It was very difficult to pull off. The timing was incredibly tight. Well, in this game, he has the extension, which just makes it a free thing. Guile, interestingly, is also the character that I think benefits most from modern controls. 
there are some really good videos online compilations of uh, a guy in particular i think he's like diamond or something using modern controls and it's absolutely ridiculous one button sonic booms one button flash kicks there are some combos that give him the charge built in it's just crazy how much he benefits but modern controls aside guile has everything he has great normals great fireballs he can zone you out he can anti-air you he has easily the best anti-airs in the entire game he has pressure he has combos he has damage just an overall absolute solid wall facing a good guile can be a nightmare and he just does really well, really good character. So yeah, easy S tier. Next up is Kimberly, one of the newcomers. Kimberly is going into the B tier as well. So the thing with Kimberly is she's basically like Guy um, and Zeku's sort of younger form. That's sort of the archetype, the ninja stuff. She has sort of the up in the air hurricane kick and all of that. And yeah, she's basically a brawler. Um, she does a lot of tricky stuff. She can get in, stay in your face, do a lot of pressure and sort of get out. One of the things where I see her struggling is, uh, first of all, her damage. I don't see her damage being that good. At least the ones I face aren't that good. And Kimberly is another one of those characters that does a lot of pressure, but I think she has trouble opening you up. Really, she has a couple of tricky stuff with her teleport and she has a couple of overheads from her run, but most of that stuff is very reactable. And I think for being a rushdown character, she does have trouble opening people up. And, and again, that combined with her sort of lackluster damage adds up to her not being the strongest. She's still good. I mean, she has incredible corner carry, probably some of the best corner carry in the game. And of course her tricks do work sometimes. And again, this is a cool character and all that, and she can pressure you. She just sort of loses out against some of the real heavy hitters here. But awesome design, by the way, I gotta mention that. Jury. Jury, I think, is going into the A tier, high A tier. Jury is really strong in this game. Uh, she has incredible pokes and some of the best normals in the game. So she's really good at just like staying at the distance and that standing medium kick, that double hitting one is just ridiculous. So she can very easily poke you out. Um, she has the anti-airs, good combos. Again, she's another one of those characters like Luke where if she charges up her sort of well, whatever the move is called, where she charges up her specials, she can do a lot of meterless damage. And I think doing meterless damage in this game is very helpful. That's combined with her amazing corner carry. And yeah, just her normals are very, very solid. A lot of stuff that's plus, a lot of pressure and kind of good mix-ups as well. That's the scary part. So overall, again, a super solid character. I think just shy of missing out on the S tier because I don't think, or I haven't seen that she has anything broken. Some of these characters, man, they are rough, but Jury doesn't have that. She's just an all around excellent character. Next up, we have Dalsim. Dalsim, I picked up at first because I was like, damn, he looks kind of cool, but I dropped him uh, because he's also that character archetype where you need to really specialize in him. I do think Dalsim is solid in this game, but just like he has been in every other Street Fighter, he has very poor defensive options, especially on we Wake Up, he can be pressured. Uh, but I think the tricks he gained in this game are some of the best. The fact that the teleport now is just a one button or one motion input instead of being a Shoryuken motion, it's just kind of crazy. Dalsim can teleport so easily and do that sort of teleport into a jumping attack, sort of instant air teleport, I should say, into jumping attack into something. He has pretty good damage and of course his pokes. If you do encounter a good Dalsim with a character that is not designed to deal with this, like Manon, uh, Zangief, some of these characters, it can be a nightmare. Dalsim can completely shut down characters as he always could. But again, I feel like he is similar to Jamie and Chun Li that you really need to dedicate to this character because he's very complicated. He has the most normals in the game in terms of having like directional input normals, and you need to be on point and know when to exactly use each of them to do well with him. That's also expanded with a lot of new tools he has. So yeah, if you want to use this character and want to use him well, you better get to learning. And still, there are gonna be some matchups where he's just gonna get absolutely destroyed. 
there are characters that can shut him down. If you get him into a corner and you're like a Luke or a Jury or something, he's going to have trouble. Uh, he's going to have trouble getting out. Still, I really like this design. I like the new tools he, they gave him. Yeah, nothing against him. Uh, he can be a nightmare, just not as strong as some of the other ones. E Honda, man, E Honda is absolutely brain dead currently, and he is an easy S tier. This is probably the character that's sort of the most annoying S tier. Um, for some reason, they decided to give him just like all the tools. He has the command grab, he has good combos, he has good damage. That charge, uh, again, where he can charge up his uh, punch, which is not punch, but the, the 100 hand slap, which was a mechanic he had in Street Fighter V, has been expanded here as well. Again, allowing him to deal good damage when he doesn't have meter. But really, the thing that makes Honda stupid is his sumo headbutt. All of the sumo headbutts he has, except for the EX one, are safe making it one of the most spammable moves in the entire game. Seriously, you can just use sumo slam and sumo headbutt and win games easily because that move is that ridiculous. I really do think, you know, I'm not like the type to call for nerfs early, but I think sumo headbutt does really need to be looked at because at its current stage, again, you can get very high. You can get into like platinum level, just like tactically spamming sumo headbutt and a lot of characters just have zero tools to deal with it. Now, it's very possible that eventually people will come up with solutions to it, but in its current stage, it's very, very difficult to deal with. And all of that's combined with the fact that Honda still has excellent tools. He has good pressure, he has the command grab. I think command grab characters are fairly strong in general in this game. And he has good damage, so aside from having an extremely spammable move, he has a lot of just other great tools, which would make him a very solid character, probably A tier, but with that sumo headbutt, easy S. Ken in this game is very solid. He's super strong uh, and he's easily going into the A tier. Like, you know Ken, you know what his deal is. This has been his gameplay style since forever, where he's like Ryu, but he focuses more on being up close, pressuring and combos. And Ken is no different in this game. Again, just like with Ryu, I really like the new tools they gave Ken and He's sort of like SF5 can, but way expanded. I really think that kick move does give him a lot, allowing him to pressure way better. I'm going to be honest with you. I probably have the least experience in the whole roster, out of the whole roster with characters like Ken and uh, DJ. So I can't comment that much on him, but from what I've seen with other people playing him, and when I face a good Ken, he can be pretty difficult to deal with. Again, just great pressure good mix-ups, and man does he hurt when he hits you. He has excellent combos uh, with just the one disadvantage being that a lot of his combos flip you around, so if you want the good damage, you do give up the corner, but that's besides the point because he has good pressure anyways, and yeah, he can be pretty difficult to deal with. Blanca, that's my main. Uh, I'm currently maining Blanca. Sorry for anyone out there. Uh, I know Blanca is not exactly the most liked character in the SF community, but I really enjoy him in this game. And I think he easily goes into the A tier. I actually think Blanca is super solid in this game. He also has a spammable move with the Blanca ball, just like E Honda. It's a little bit less broken, I think, with Blanca because Unlike with E-Honda, only the heavy version is safe with Blanca, but it really comes down to the same thing, that it's a tool you can spam over and over again, and people just have very tough times dealing with it. Uh, there are a couple of characters that can shut it down, but yeah, most of the time you're going to be getting free chip and free pressure with this. But that's besides the point. I think Blanca also overall is fairly solid. He has on a good command grab, I think his command grab is way better than it was in um, SF5. The fact that it loops into itself if the opponent is not paying attention is pretty cool. The rainbow ball is as good as always. In fact, I think rainbow ball is very solid. You can go into good pressure and he generally has very good pokes. Uh, that forward heavy punch, that sort of like body splat thing, very strong. And he, again, has just like a couple of long range normals. That sliding sweep he has is, it's actually a heavy punch. That sliding heavy punch is great for getting under fireballs. And it's, I gotta tell you, it's a great match opener. I've caught so many people off with that. And yeah, 
he's a tricky character. He's not easy to play. And I'm going to say it. I don't know like 20% of what you should be doing with Blanca. He gets really crazy once you start using the Blanca doll. And there are a lot of setups with that. And just like in Street Fighter V, he has a lot of setups with his uh, second super, the one that allows him to sort of extend and steer the Blanca ball. I was always terrible at those combos, but the fact that I do well with Blanca, I consistently get wins, even just using his basic toolkit, I think tells you something. He is still solid and a bit of a nightmare to deal with. Yeah, so again, apologies for everyone who's encountered me or encountered any good Blanca because... He can be a headache and yeah, just a solid character overall. DJ. Now, like I said, similarly to Ken, I have not a lot of experience with DJ. I do fight quite a lot of them online and I think he's another A tier. He is very tricky and I always sort of sometimes compare him to uh, Guile, but that's just because he's also a charge character and his fireball kind of looks similar. But I think DJ is a lot more focused on being up close. The thing that makes this character very good is all of the feints he has. He can feint his fireball, he can feint his kicks, and just going to grabs all day from that. Um, he's fast and he has a lot of good normals. DJ has always been, I think, one of those characters that had good normals, and he's no different in this game. Um, good damage, yeah, an overall very, very strong character. Again, just because of the lack of experience, I can't comment on him too much, but I know that DJs are not easy to deal with, especially good ones online. So yeah, shout out to DJ, he's pretty cool in this game. I think people are happy with him because I know he was probably the weakest character one of the weakest characters, I should say, in 4, which is his last appearance. So I'm glad that he got some love and people are happy with him. Manon, or Manon, if you want the proper pronunciation. Uh, so Manon can be an absolute headache to deal with. Once she charges up her grabs, man, it's over for you. Uh, the fact that she doesn't lose even one level between rounds is crazy because she can easily give up round 1 just going to get to level 5 charge and then she can end you in like 4 command grabs and that is pretty crazy because she also has a good toolkit on top of that. But I do think that a lot of what Manon does is kind of a gimmick and I think this is going to be one of those classic characters that once people figure her out she is not going to be used that much. What holds her down I think or holds her back I should say are her normals. She just doesn't have good normals. Um, which is sort of the trade-off for her being very focused on command grabs and all the ballet shit she does. Still, again, I think this is a character that looks scary on paper, and again, once you get hit by a level 5 command grab, you'll feel your blood pressure rise. I don't know how much of her stuff is real and how much of it is just gimmicks and just people not being familiar with the matchup. I think it will have to sort of be determined later on. If she is actually solid and people figure out how to play her solidly, she is going to be an easy S tier. Like, but that comes down to whether her moves are actually good or whether they are gimmicks. And that is something left to be determined so far. Marissa, Marissa, I think, is an A tier. She reminds me of Abigail uh, in terms of her gameplay style. She's a big character and focuses on heavy hitting moves. And of course, she has the charge up normals similar to Abigail. Yeah, she is another one of those characters that can struggle. Obviously, zoners completely shut her down or can shut her down. But she has a little bit of an easier time to deal with zoners because of the armored move she has. I think she has a more varied armored toolkit than Zangief does. And once she gets in, man does she hurt. That stance into command grab is absolutely insane. Her damage in general is absolutely insane. She doesn't even have to get combos. She can hit you with that charged, um, I don't know which special move that is, that sort of charge punch she does, and it's gonna deal like 20% damage, and it's absolutely insane. If she gets a counter with that, it's over for you. And yeah, this is a character that lives or dies by getting in, but she has a lot easier time getting in than some of the other characters on this list. JP is a controversial one. I, people, I honestly think that JP is just B tier. I think he falls into the category of like Manon in that he's sort of gimmicky. I don't know how actually strong his zoning is. I feel like 
yeah, similarly to Dalsim, uh, these two zoners, uh, once people figure you out, it's going to be trouble. JP does have better defensive options, that sort of teleport thing he does, or I don't know what, it's a counter, which is his wake up, uh, it's pretty strong, but it can be baited. And again, I feel like Mr. SF6 Noob Cybot here is going to be, again, another one of those characters that just destroys early on. And then people are going to go and lab against him and figure everything out against him. And he's not going to be that strong. One thing I do have to say that I'm surprised about is how few JPs I see online. When this character was announced and I saw his first trailer, the fact that he has like full screen grabs, overheads, low zoning and all of that, I thought everybody was going to be rocking this character, but that's not the case. He is difficult to play and you do need to know what you're doing with him, similarly to Dalsim, but JP focuses on his specials, whereas Dalsim focuses on the normals. Still, again, I could be completely wrong, and if this character turns out to be very solid, he's going to be way up here. But for now, I personally think after a week that he is a little bit gimmicky. Still, awesome villain though, I do gotta mention that. Kami is another B tier character. Kami, very solid. Um, she has always focused on staying very grounded and opening you up with pressure. I do like that they gave a little bit of use to her hooligan combination. Uh, the command sort of flip into the air. That was one of the moves that I always felt like people just didn't use in Street Fighter V. Uh, but the fact that she now has an overhead out of it, her only overhead, only significant overhead, makes the move a lot more usable. Yeah, I do like what they did with her. I think that mechanic of her being able to charge up her moves is just a great idea. Uh, but she still focuses on what she's always focused on, again, being very solid, pressuring you, and then just doing a lot of grabs and then getting good damage. Now... The thing that's holding Kami back is again her HP. She's always been one of those characters that had a little bit less HP. Um, and again, these crazy ridiculous characters just completely shut her down. And you know, some of these characters have just like overhead starters that they can combo out of. And Kami does have that, but it's coming out of a special move and all of that. So she's just being held back. Uh, if you do know how to play Kami really solidly, you'll do well but I think she's more difficult to play than someone like over here. Kimberly, I think this is another one of those characters I don't have a lot of experience with. I haven't fought too many good ones. Uh, I think she's a C tier. From the ones I fought, she's just like laser focused on one specific thing, which is get her wind charge, do the dash in, and then mix up with a command grab or a normal. That's her essential gameplay loop. She just does that over and over and over again. And I think she's another one of these gimmick characters. I will say she has good normals, uh, very long range normals, which is actually kind of a strange, she's sort of a strange archetype in that she's a little bit like T-Hawk. She focuses on the grabs, but at the same time, she has long range normals and weapons. Yeah, she's a bit of a weird one. And once she can get her, um, what you call it, gameplay going, she does very well. Uh, the gameplay loop is difficult to get out of because she puts you in a guessing situation every single time. And then she just loops back into it and loops back and you guess wrong a couple of times and you ate like two EX command grabs and you just like have a bad time. But again, can that gimmick be shut down? Yes, it can be. And then she really does struggle because I feel like Lila doesn't have the, the sort of solid background moves to do well. Still, great idea, and again, I do like that they added some new character archetypes, and she's definitely one of these new ones, very creative. And finally, the big man himself, uh, the character I actually most enjoy playing in this game currently. Man, just, I can't get over how fun it is to scoop people up with Zangief. Unfortunately, Zangief, I think, is a C tier. Uh, he's joining Jamie and uh, Lily in the C tier. Now, don't get me wrong. You get a counter hit or sort of punish counter EX command grab. Bruh, that's like, I don't know how much damage that is in percentage, but it hurts. It's a visible chunk on your opponent's life. It can surprisingly quickly end a match because you're like, is it gonna kill? And it almost always kills. So. Zangief does have damage, and he does have an easier time getting in than ever, but 
it's another one of those things where he struggles with the things he has always struggled with in that a lot of characters can just infinitely keep him out. Now, he does have the EX run, uh, well, that bear grab. That's a gimmick. It has always been a gimmick. If you know what to do against it, jump backwards or jump up, you can completely shut that down. You can absolutely keep him out forever. Like, I'm looking at you, Mr. Guile. Um, I'm looking at you. Even Luke can keep him out. And then he really struggles because, again, he doesn't have a lot of stuff. He has the SPD and he has the spin move, really. Those are the two things. Again, that running bear grab is a bit of a gimmick. So, yeah. Um, and his normals are, aside from the target combo, basically unchanged from Street Fighter V. He has a couple of things going for him. And, again, he can end matches in a couple of good guesses. But that's always been a Zangief thing. He needs to guess right, and if you happen to not guess right, it's going to be a little problem for you. And I think with that, we have a pretty solid tier list. I think this is good. Now, I didn't put anybody in the D tier, because basically to expand what I said on in the beginning, I don't think anybody is terrible in this game. I think even the C tiers are solid. They're just way weaker and way more difficult to use than some of these characters. The universal mechanics really do bring everybody together a lot more. And with that, I think there are no clear, awful characters in this game. And, you know, we'll see how all of this develops. It could be that there is a character in here that is absolutely way worse than the other ones that will go into the D tier. But right now, I don't see it. You'll still have your drive impact, your drive rush. You can always get combos with that. You always have your parry as a defensive option. So yeah, I'm not sure. I think the balance in this game is pretty good with the caveat that these S tiers are, are very good. Uh, we'll see how all of this develops. After a week, it's always difficult to say. But yeah, I think... I'm pretty happy with this. What I'm going to do is I'll wrap it up here. Let me know what you think of the SF6 tier list. Who do you think is really strong or OP? Who's not? Let me know your thoughts below. If you did enjoy this video, like, comment, and subscribe as always. And yeah, see you next time with more Street Fighter 6 stuff. Peace out, everyone, and goodbye.